Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Welcome back. We are going to talk about, um, I would say a topic that I think um, needs to be have, needs to be had. And this topic is about whether Christians should abide by the same covenant as the Israelites. Now, by hearing this, you're already thinking, well, I'm a Christian, I'm not an Israelite. So whatever God had to do with the Israelites is only for the Israelites. And us Christians, we have different things to abide by. Uh, I'm not too sure if that would be the case. And I'm going to show you why that is. Now, um... I'm not going to go too deep. That's only part one. I'm going to do a second part to that with more, um, with I would say, deeper meaning. So, let's start with what we have today. We're going to start with the book of Genesis. In Genesis, we're going to start with, with chapter 17. So, in Genesis, chapter 17 we see in chapter 17 that God made a covenant with Abraham or Abraham for uh, with the circumcision that i would say it is a covenant with Abraham so if it's if if it's about the um, well i'm a christian and not an israelite then today christians shouldn't be doing circumcision Right? Because that was only for the Israelites or for the Hebrews. Um, first, we have that the covenant with Abraham, right? And in 19 to 21, we have the covenant with Isaac. So, Isaac, in, in verse 19, God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear, shall, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call him his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him. For an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Verse 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee as this set time in the next year. Now, in chapter 26 of Genesis, we go, I'm going to try to go throughout the Bible to see the covenant. To those that are saying um, the covenant is only for the, for the house of Israel and that we don't have to abide by those covenant, I think they have been misled and they don't understand exactly what the point of the covenant actually is. 12, chapter 26 the God, God's promise to Isaac. Remember in chapter 17, God said, I will make a covenant with Isaac. Now, in chapter 26, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I want you guys to read it. In chapter 26, God made a covenant with Isaac. Why? When he told Isaac the reason, now, he says in verse number 2, And the Lord appeared unto him, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I will tell thee, so join in the land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto your father Abraham. I will make thy seed to multiply as the source of heaven. I will give unto thee the, thy seed all the countries, okay? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. So the idea that the commandments were only given to Moses at Mount Sinai, I, I don't, th I don't think that's the case because here Abraham kept God's commandments. Whatever commandments God gives to Abraham, Abraham kept it. And we like to call ourselves the children of Abraham or the children of Isaac and of Jacob. 
But then, when it comes to God's commandment, we have a problem with it. Or his laws, or his statutes. Right? But then, we saw in chapter... Now, we're going to see something else now. In chapter 32... In chapter 32, from verse number 25 and up onward, this is when Jacob is going back to see Esau. The Bible says in verse 22, to, well, I would say from verse 25, it says, uh, verse 24 actually, And Jacob was left alone, and there, were, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed, not ag- not against him, meaning the the men, the men saw that he didn't prevail against Jacob. He touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, "Let me go for the day breaketh." And he said, "I will not let thee go." This is Jacob, except thou bless me. And he said unto Jacob, "What is thy name?" And he said, "His name is Jacob." And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hath prevailed. So, funny thing is, and now in verse number 30, Jacob says, I have seen God face to face, right, and what? And my life is preserved. So is there a way to see God face to face and still not die? It is possible. It is possible. There there is a way that you can be face to face with God and not die. Jacob did. Isaac, not Isaac, um, I think he, is that, is that Isaiah, Isaiah also did. Some people actually were with God face to face and did not die. But what is this thing about whatever was to the Jewish nation or to the Israelites, the Christian have a different rule. I don't see where the Bible says that we have different rules, except when it explicitly says these things were nailed to the cross, which is what? The ceremonial law. The ceremonial law, which pointed to Jesus Christ, which is the great sacrifice, these things were nailed to the cross. But the idea of what we should be eating, that were never nailed to the cross. But that's a different topic for a different time. We're going to continue. And I want to see, I want the Christians to have that same mindset. Because if we say Whatever happened back then was only for the Israelites because we are not Jews. Then, in that case, only Jews or Israelites will be going to heaven. Why? So, let's see. Exodus chapter 2. Remember, God made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Isaac. And with Jacob, he made the same covenant. Now, he doesn't say he made a covenant with Jacob, but the same phrases that God uses for Isaac, he uses the same thing with Jacob. Um, Now, I'm not going to go too deep, because this is just like a brushing over. Exodus chapter 2. How do we know that God made a covenant with Jacob? Well, uh... It said it, it said it right there in Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 24, right? Let's see. And in the process of time, verse number 23, in the process of time, or oh, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came on, up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard the groaning, and God remembered his covenant with whom? With Abraham, right? With else? With Isaac, and who else? 
and with Jacob. So did God make a covenant with Jacob? Yes. But wait a minute. God told Jacob his name will no longer be, no longer, no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Wait, I'm going to keep that right there. And God looked upon the children of Jacob, or Israel, and had respect unto them. So, remember, the name at birth is Jacob. But here, God looked upon the children of Israel. He didn't say Jacob. Okay? Chapter 24. Exodus 24. We're going to go through the Bible. Chapter 24. God made a covenant with the Israelites. Right? And that's the covenant that they are talking. And we're going to see here in verse number... Nope. In verse number 4. Bible says... No, verse number 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgment and all the people answer with one voice saying all the words which the Lord has said we will do that was the covenant what was in that covenant we know in that covenant was the ten commandments right so the same covenant that they give to Isaac Abraham and Jacob the descendant of Jacob had that same covenant it's not a different covenant Abraham, he talked about a covenant of circumcision, but guess what? Bible also said he he kept my laws, my commandments, and my statutes. Now, just because we don't get a detail of everything that God has said to Abraham, doesn't mean it's not true, because whenever God is speaking to the descendant, we see that it had laws, it had the commandments, and it had statutes. That's why that's why you're gonna see that when God says it shall be a statute for me between me and you for all your generations, usually when you talk about the priesthood. Or when you talk about the covenant, it's not like I say this is my covenant with you forever, when you talk about the Sabbath or the Ten Commandments. So remember those three things. Now, now chapter 24. Eight chapters later, chapter 32, and they broke the covenant. What was the covenant? To keep the Lord's covenant and commandments, his statutes, and his laws. But what did they do? They broke the covenant. They broke the covenant, right? So then, what did God do next after they broke the covenant? I'm not going to the whole chapter. Uh, I'm just telling you what the chapter is all about. What does God do next? And then, after after the 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 covenant is broken, God makes a new covenant. In Exodus chapter thirty-four, because they had broken the commandment, remember the the covenant in chapter thirty-two, Moses now had God made new tablets, a new covenant. Right? So God had to renew the covenant which he had made with the house of Israel. So, what I want you, to, what I want you guys to think about is every time God talks about the covenant, he says, I'm making a covenant with the house of Israel. In Judges chapter 2, Judges chapter 2, Judges chapter 2, Bible says in verse number one that God swore unto your fathers, I will never break my covenant with whom? With you. Why? The Bible says, Bible says and the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Boshem and said, I made you go out of Egypt. Who was he talking to? The children of Israel. So God is telling them, I will never break the covenant I made with the house of Israel. When we go to Jeremiah chapter 11, Jeremiah chapter 11, we have, we get the, in chapter 11 of Jeremiah, we get the same 
the same wording the broken covenant heal ye of this covenant and speak unto the of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and as you read through that from verse 1 through verse number 10 God is talking about the covenant he made with the house of Israel that they break they break right they break the, com the covenant they have verse number 10 says they are they they are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers which refused to hear my word and they went after other gods to serve them the house of israel and the house of judah have broken my covenant which i made with their fathers so all the covenant that god is speaking about he has made with the house of israel chapter 22 verse number nine we get the same thing again they and then they shall answer because they have forsaken the covenant of the lord their god and worship other gods and serve them who is they the house of israel now because they keep doing that for a second time god renews the covenant in chapter 20 in chapter 22 we hear them again, keep on, they keep on breaking the covenant. But now in chapter 30, 31, God now renews the covenant for a second time. Verse number 31 to verse number 33. The new covenant, uh, there's another new covenant. Behold, the day the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. What was that covenant? That was in chapter 24, when they made that covenant and they broke it in chapter 32. And God renewed it in chapter 34, but yet they are breaking it again. So God says, No, this time it's going to be different because I'm going to make the covenant now. So what was what, what the covenant? That this shall be the covenant that I made with the house of Israel. After those days of the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and shall be my people. So they couldn't keep it outwardly. So God wants to put it inwardly. That way, outwardly, they can also keep it. With all that being said, why would Christians say this covenant was with the house of Israel? And that's for us. Well, let me say that to you guys. Um, if somebody tells you this covenant is only for the house of Israel, let me tell you, and, and they don't have to live at that covenant, let me tell you something. In that case, you tell them, well, I guess in that case, only the house of Israel will be saved. Because God only makes a covenant with the house of Israel. He doesn't make a covenant with the house of Americans, Haitians, Dominicans, Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, French, Germans, Polish. doesn't make any of those covenants with them. He makes it with the house of Israel. But thank God, <laughs> thank God that this is not the case. Because Israel, as we've seen, is not a given name. Right? Israel is not a given name. When we go back to the book of Genesis, chapter 32, chapter 32 of Genesis, Bible says this, when God spoke with Jacob, and he said what? Your name shall not be Jacob, but, uh-oh, where is it? There we go. Your name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed, Israel is not a given name. Israel is not a given name. So when we just what is, those who will be in heaven, or those that God make a covenant with, are those that are prevailers with God. Meaning, you have met God and you're still alive. So, 
if you don't want to become an Israelite, well, it doesn't have to be by birth, because most of us are not, but if you don't want to become an Israelite, then you will not prevail with God. That's the point of it. That's why I think, that's why I believe, Christians these days should abide by the same covenant as of the Israelites. Why? Because God only makes a covenant with the house of Israel. Nobody else. But again, don't forget to hit that, that like button, and that's all button, and that's all button on our way out. It was the Open Red TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.